Okay, so I have to make a nice recording for Sam because he's going to come back and listen to it. All right, so. Um, okay, where did we go? I want to click out of here. That's what I want to do. Okay, so lesson 14, we're simplifying complex fractions. And we've got steps again. Steps are good. So find a common denominator in the numerator and also find a common denominator in the denominator. We kind of did something similar when we were just doing function notation. Okay, we had the four layer fractions back then too. Okay. Um, simplify the numerator and denominator as much as possible by adding or subtracting. Fully factor numerators and denominators where possible. And then multiply by the reciprocal and state restrictions. Remember, because it's a dividing question, we'll circle where you have to look at those restrictions from. Divide out any like factors and state your answer in simplest form with restrictions. Okay, so first, find a common denominator just in the numerator. So if I'm just looking at the numerator only right now for a second, what would my common denominator be considering that the two, the denominator and the two is just a one? So my denominators are one and x in the numerator. One x, can I just write x? Yeah, so in the numerator here, I'm making them each out of x. Okay, so in order to get from having a denominator of 1, the 2, to a denominator of x, I had to multiply the bottom by x. So I have to multiply the top, which is the 2, by x. Okay. This one already had x as the denominator, so it's going to keep 1 as the numerator. So this is equivalent to that. Okay just wrote it with a common denominator. So then I still want to go over, okay? And now I want to look at the denominator and analyze what the common denominator in the denominator would be. Because right now there's a one in the denominator of the four and an x squared in the other denominator. What do we think about common denominator? 1x squared, so x squared, good. Then I'm going to put a minus x squared. And then I have to adjust the numerators. So this denominator was a 1. I had to multiply by x squared, so I have to multiply the top by x squared. Here the denominator was already x squared, so the numerator, which is 1, is going to stay the same. So again, that denominator and this denominator are equivalent. They're just written differently. Okay? So now that I have a common denominator in the numerator, I just need to write that denominator down once and then subtract, in this case, the numerators. Okay? Same thing in the denominator. Now that I have a common denominator of x squared, I just need to write it down once and subtract the numerators. And then I'm going to highlight again so we can keep track of where everything is. So this is still our numerator, it's still equivalent, and this is still our denominator. Okay? So let's look at our steps and see which ones we can click off for this question. Now find a common denominator in the numerator and in the denominator. Done. Simplify the numerator and denominator as much as possible by adding or subtracting. Done. Fully factor numerators and denominators where possible. We haven't done that yet. So let's go through. Can I factor 2x minus 1? No. Can I factor x? No. 
Can I factor 4x squared minus 1? It is a difference of squares. See that? So it factors to give me 2x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 over x squared. Because x squared can't be factored either. Everyone agree? So I factored numerators and denominators as much as possible. Now I multiply by the reciprocal and state restrictions. So this is my first fraction. 2x minus 1 over x. This is my divide sign, but I'm changing it to a multiply, so I'm multiplying by the reciprocal of this second fraction here. So what does reciprocal mean? What's going to be on top and what's going to be on bottom when I multiply? x squared is going to be on the top because I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. And then 2x minus 1 over 2x plus 1 is going to be on the bottom. So I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay? Now because it's initially a divided by question, I have to look for restrictions in both denominators as well as this numerator. Okay? So my restrictions come from those three locations. So if I look here, this x can't be 0. But same with x squared on top, x also can't be 0. These ones are the, a little bit harder. So how do I figure out if I don't know what two, what x has to be for 2x minus 1 to be 0? I make my little grade 9 equation. Add 1 to both sides. Divide by 2. So I get that x can't be a half. But then 2x plus 1 is going to be negative a half. So I can write plus or minus a half. Okay, so those are my restrictions. So now I've done this whole step three. Fully factor numerators and denominators where possible. Multiply by the reciprocal and state restrictions. Remember it's a dividing question. Divide out like factors. So I've got to, before I do that, let's multiply the numerators together with the monomial terms out front. So x squared is a monomial and 2x minus 1 is a binomial. x is a monomial, and 2x minus 1 and 2x plus 1 are binomials. So now I can divide out like factors. Do we see any? The 2x minus 1. The 2x minus 1, okay, so those are gone. Anything else we can reduce? Yeah. So this x goes with one of the ones on top. So our final answer is going to be just x over 2x plus 1. And then our restrictions. x can't be 0 or positive or negative 1 half. So what I like about these questions is look how nice our answer is compared to what our question looked like. Okay, a four-layer fraction, and then all of a sudden we have this really nice, pretty two-layer one, which is x over 2x plus 1. I have like 20 steps less than what we just did. <laughs> it took a lot of steps to get there, but... No, I mean like this one? Like what she <laughs> Like there's no room on this page for me right Okay, now. yes, that, that adding and subtracting is intense, so it's nice to kind of follow it up with this, which... It, is, it still takes a lot of understanding, but it's not quite as intense. Okay, so same, all the same steps. First step is to get a, the common denominator in the numerator. So if I'm just looking at the numerator, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go this way for my first step, and then I'll go down to save room. But just in the numerator, I want a common denominator. 
So right now my denominators are 1 and A. So my common denominator is going to be A. Okay, good. So I had to multiply the bottom by A. I have to multiply the top by A. A times A is A squared, not 2A. I'm there. This one already had A for the denominator, so 1 stays as its numerator. Over, so these are equivalent. So if I'm looking at this one right now, their denominators are 1 and A. So the common denominator is A. Here I had to multiply by A, so I have to multiply the top by A. This one already has the denominator of A, so the top stays the same. So these two are equivalent. Okay, so first step, get a common denominator in the numerator and in the denominator. Okay? Now we're going to um, keep our common denominator in the numerator and subtract. And same thing in the bottom, we're going to keep our common denominator in the denominator and add this time. Okay, so this is the big step. We're going to factor as much as possible, multiply by the reciprocal, and stay our restrictions. That's a lot. So, can I factor a squared minus 1? Difference of squares. So it factors to give me a plus 1 times a minus 1. Everybody good? So that's check over a. Now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. This divide sign changes to a multiply, so I'm using a bracket. So this a goes on top. Can it be factored? No. Can a plus 1 be factored? No. So there I am. I've done everything in that big long step three except for state or restriction. And for restrictions, I have to look here, here, and here. See if you can figure out what the restrictions would be on A. Yep, Sub? Negative one and zero. Uh, negative one and zero, yes. So zero here and here, negative one there. Everybody good? Okay, so now we multiply our tops together with the monomial term first, and then our binomials. Multiply our denominators together, monomial first, and then binomial. Reduce. And this one reduces really well. Our a plus 1s divide out, and so do our a's. So we're just left with a minus 1 and our restrictions that a can't be negative 1 or 0. Yep? I just thought where did the square go, but I forgot where did the square go. Okay. Alright. So, yeah. Once you start to get the hang of it, it's the same thing every time. Okay. So, C. First step is figuring out what the common denominator in the numerator. See lots of people putting x squared for their common denominator and the numerator. That's awesome. Okay, I'm 
is x for their common denominator and the denominator. second step. Okay, we'll do this. So check your second step out. Everybody get that that would be your second step? Okay, now third step is where everything happens. So we factor, multiply by the reciprocal, and do restrictions. Third step is the big step. So it's going to be, oops. So x squared minus 36 is a difference of squares. Yeah. So it's going to factor to give me x plus 6 times x minus 6 over x squared. And then this divide changes to a multiply by the reciprocal. And x and x minus 6 don't factor. Okay. So there's my factor multiplied by the reciprocal, but I have to do restrictions. And I look at those three locations to figure them out. So x can't be 0, 0 again here, or 6. Yes? Okay, so then now I multiply the numerators together with the binomial term out front. Multiply the denominators together with the binomial term out front. Divide out like factors. So I've got x minus 6s here and here. And then this x goes with one of those. Okay. So my final answer should be x plus 6 over x, as long as x can't be 0 or 6. Yeah? Okay, so here, this the next one looks a bit more complicated, but it's still the same. Oh, wait, where did they? What happened? You went down. No, we do. But something happened. Like, I, un my question went away. What? How is that possible? Wait, if you go down a little bit, you're right uh, underneath that. Uh, but where did the initial question of this go? Oh, good, good call. Ah, yes, yes, undo, thank you. Okay, good. Very good. Okay. All right, so for this one, I'm going to set up starting going this way, okay? So I'm looking at my denominators right now in the numerator, and they're x, x squared, and x cubed. So based on this morning, what would the common denominator be? x cubed, right? Because you can divide x cubed by x squared, and you can divide x cubed by x, not the other way around, without getting negative x ones. So I'm making each of these um, terms in the numerator out of x cubed. So see if you can figure out what the numerators in the numerator would become. 
after you change the denominators to x cubed. Okay, so in the first fraction, you had to multiply the bottom by x squared. x times x squared gives you x cubed. So you have to multiply the top by x squared. 1 times x squared is x squared. Okay? The second one, you had to multiply x squared by x to get x cubed. So you have to multiply the top by x. Right? And the last one already had x cubed as the denominator, so the numerator will stay the same. All right? So those two things are equivalent. All right. Now in the denominator, my denominators are 1 and x. So my common denominator is this x. So I'm going to make each fraction the denominator out of x. This one, I had to multiply the denominator by x, so I multiply the numerator by x. And this one already had x as a denominator, so phi is going to stay as the numerator. So these are equivalent. Okay? So next line down, I'm going to add and subtract the numerators in the numerator over the common denominator of x cubed and then over I'm going to subtract x minus 5 over the common denominator x. So that's step one and step two done. Okay, getting common denominator and the numerator and denominator and then collecting them. All right, so step three is the big one. Factor multiplied by the reciprocal and state restrictions. So, does x squared minus 8x plus 15 factor? Yes, it's a simple trinomial. So, two numbers that multiply to 15 and add to negative 8. Negative 3 and negative 5, both have two negatives. So, x minus 3 times x minus 5 over x cubed. And then we want to multiply by the reciprocal, so we're going to flip the second one upside down and make it x over x minus 5. Neither one factors. Okay? Then, we're still not done step 3. We have to look for restrictions in those three locations. Zero and five. Okay, so now we multiply the numerators together with the monomial term out front and multiply the denominators together with the monomial term out front. And then we look and see if there's any like factors to reduce. And there is. There's x minus 5, and then the x on top goes with one of the three that are multiplying together on the bottom, so that exponent becomes a 2, okay? So there's one x on the top and three on the bottom, all multiplying together, so you're going to be left with x minus 3 over x squared, as long as x is not 0 or 5. Okay, and note that's as hard as they get, so I, I did another one like that for you guys to try on your own. Oops. Well, at least I know I can undo to get back there. So try the next one. I'll pause it once I find it. There it is. Okay. 
Tenemos el grado. Let me do the sign first. So, let's go over again this, the complex thing everyone's good at first. So, good. Uh, x times x squared to get x cubed, so 1 times x squared. And then this one already had x cubed, so the same is the same. So, these are equivalent expressions. And then here, denominator x cubed again. I had to multiply by x squared. I had to multiply by x. I already had it. So these are equivalent. Okay, so now I'm going to collect x squared minus 4 over x cubed over x squared plus 7x plus 10 over x cubed. So now I do step 3, factoring as I go. So does x squared minus 4 factor? Yes, difference of squares. So x plus 2 times x minus 2 over x cubed multiplied by the reciprocal. So x cubed is going to be on top. But does x squared plus 7x plus 10 factor? Simple trinomial. So it factors to give me x plus 5 times x plus 2. Then I look for restrictions. Here, here, and here. So my restrictions are going to be x can't be 0 for both of those, negative 5, and negative 2. Okay? Then I'm going to multiply the numerators together with my monomial term out front. And multiply my denominators together. Simplify by dividing out like factors. So I've got an x cubed in the top and the bottom, and an x minus 2 in the top and the bottom. So I, my final answer is going to be x plus 2 over x plus 5 as long as x is not 0, negative 5, or negative 2. How many people got that? What did I do wrong? It should be. Thank you. Thank you for noticing my error. Yeah. I changed it, didn't I? Okay, so that's going to make this x plus 2. Is it copy here? Sorry. <laughs> and then now it's the x plus 2 is it cancel, right? Not the x minus 2. So on the top should be x minus 2. Over x plus 5, and x can't be 0, negative 5, and negative 2. Yes? Okay. Awesome. All right. So I will stop the recording and give you your practice.